Hi everyone. This video is a short introduction to installing and configuring Arpanion Server. Um, Arpanion Server is an open source um, web-based GUI for man managing a companion computer on a drone or robot. Um, a companion computer being typically a Raspberry Pi or Jetson that um, then connects with a Mavlink based flight controller like ArduPilot or PX4. Um, Arpanion server's major features are being able to configure Mavlink routing, um, the, net, net, the networking and the video streaming from the companion computer, in addition to other functions like being able to configure popular VPN services, automatic cloud upload and log and log file management, as well as um, NTRIP inputs for GPS corrections to your flight controller. Uh, so I'm just at the Arpanion server documentation website here. Um, I'll post the, the link to this um, in the video description. Um, if you scroll down, you can see the disk images for the various versions. Um, we, I provide um, pre-built disk images for the Raspberry Pi 3, 4, 0, 2 and Raspberry Pi 5. Um, on other platforms like the Jetson, you will have to um, build it yourself. Um, in our case, what we're going to do is I have a Raspberry Pi 4 handy. So we're going to download the image for the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, note here for the latest version 011, there is a separate image for the Raspberry Pi 5, uh, just because of the way the software is configured on there. So we will you click the download link. Um, that will download to there. Um, it's about a one gigabyte image, so it will take a few minutes to download. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel that download because um, I have a pre-saved version with me. Right, so what we will do is we'll just select a custom IMG file from laptop and we will go down to my downloads and there's the file there. Double click that, um, choose the SD card, next. Um, don't apply OS customization settings. Um, yes. And we will just, um, that will then take a few minutes to write. Um, and then we, then we can go with the installation. Okay. And here we have our setup. It's just a Raspberry Pi 4 with a Cube Orange Plus flight controller and a Raspberry Pi HQ camera. Uh, I'm using the Pi Connect light board on the Raspberry Pi for the power and telemetry connections to the Raspberry Pi. So you can see a, um, the telemetry connector from the Cube Orange is going into the telemetry connector on the Pi Connect light, which then links to the GPIO UART on the Raspberry Pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the SD card that we made just before and we'll just insert that into the Raspberry Pi here. Like that, and just insert it there. And then we're just going to power the system up. So we'll just add some power here through the XT30 and press the power button here. There we go. And I've just got the Cube Orange Plus on a USB battery, so that's starting up now. So there we go, we have our setup. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll let that boot up and we'll go to the web GUI. Okay, so we've connected to the Arpanion Wi-Fi hotspot, which starts up automatically when the Raspberry Pi starts up. And we've gone to the IP address 10.02.100, port 3000, which, is, which will load up the Arpanion server homepage right here. So the default username is admin, the default password is admin. This can be changed later, so we'll just go in 
here and that will just take a moment to there we go um, then we've got the user interface here so what we'll do first is we'll one of the first things we'll do is we'll get mission planner set up with a telemetry and video feed from the flight controller so what we'll do is we will go to flight controller here scroll below just to quickly go over the major options so you have a variety of TCP or UDP options depending on how you want to route your Mavlink streams. Um, so what we'll do is we'll tick um, UDP and TCP servers so we can try those two. And we can also, you can also um, have our Panion server send, send data stream Mavlink requests and do telemetry logs as well. So we'll tick telemetry logs too so we can look at that later. So what we will do is we will just start that now, like that. And if we scroll down the bottom, it should be just a mo just take a few moments for it to connect. Or not. Maybe I've got the wrong board rate. Right? Let's try 115200. There we go. Now that I've got the right board rate, you can see it all coming through there. And it will show the vehicle type and RG Pilot version and so forth. So we will go to Mission Planner now. Just start that up. wait for mission planner to start up and then we'll, we will be able to connect to this telemetry stream all right so what we will do is we will try the tcp server first that's 1002.100 ip address of the raspberry pi and then remote port 5760 which is specified just here in our Panion server, that's always hard set. So we'll just press OK and that will now connect. And there we go, that's all connected now. Alternatively, we can connect via UDP. Um, so here you've got the UDP server, which uses the UDP CI option in Mission Planner, port 14550. So we will do that. So UDPCI connect port. Yep, same IP address as last time. Port 14550, OK. And that will connect as well. So super easy to connect your flight controller there. Wait for that to come up. And there we go. So next we will get the video stream going. So we will go to the video streaming option here. Just wait for it. And here we find it's detected our Raspberry Pi camera. Um, there's also a test source um, if you don't have a camera connected and you just want to test the video streaming function. So we'll try 720p um, at 25 frames per second, bit rate of, we'll try two megabits per second. Um, no timestamp overlay, and then we can just start streaming like that. And handily below, it's got connection strings here for VLC, G Streamer, and Mission Planner. So what we will do is we will just copy this connection string and we will paste that into Mission Planner. So we right click on the HUD, Video, Set GStream as Source. Then we just paste that in. Uh, and then we press OK. And that'll just take a moment to show up there. And there we go. Um, we'll just resize that with the set aspect ratio. There we go. And there we go. We have live telemetry and video stream done super 
easy and quick to configure. If I just wave my hand in front of there, you can see that. Um, latency I'm getting on the Wi-Fi is probably le less than half half a second. Um, that will vary depending on your network conditions. Um, so we will just stop that now. G stream stop. And we'll just disconnect from Mission Planner and we will quickly go through the other options here as well. Um, we have flight log management where you have your telemetry logs and um, bin logs here. Um, you can just click on these to download them whenever you want. Um, telemetry logs are just a re recording of all the Maplink messages received by the Raspberry Pi. The bin logs are the um, high resolution Archie Pilot logs which are normally stored on the SD card. Um, opinion server, if you set the right log backend type in RG Pilot, um, RG Pilot will stream these logs to the Raspberry Pi um, where you can just download them super easily, just like that, um, without having to fumble around with the SD card on the flight controller. Um, additionally, um, you can create um, KMZ tracks uh, from the T logs if you want to do so as well. Um, next we have Ntrip. Um, Ntrip is a correction protocol for RTK capable GPSs. Here if you have a web based Ntrip server you can just enter in the details, enable that and that will send through the corrections to your flight controller via the Raspberry Pi. Um, next we have our network configuration. So here you can um, select your different um, physical adapters on the device, um, change the network connection, like we've got the Wi-Fi access point here, and change the frequency band if supported by your device, Wi-Fi channel, IP address and so forth. Or you can add a new connection if you want to connect to your home or office Wi-Fi as well. And what our Panion server will do is it will prefer to connect to existing networks like your home or office Wi-Fi. Um, if it can't find those, it will then fall back to the Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, so that works really well if you want to, if you're out in the field and you just want to quickly connect to run some configuration. And then when you head back to your home or office, um, it will connect to that Wi-Fi and be able to synchronize its data there. Um, next, we have access point clients. Um, if you're running in X, if you're running in hotspot mode, it will tell you all the connected um, devices and their IP addresses, which can be useful for debugging connection issues or pasting in IP addresses to the flight controller section. Next we have cloud upload. So the cloud upload section will automatically upload your bin logs to a cloud service um, just um, via rsync. So if you have um, a server with rsync access that's um, accessible to the Raspberry Pi here, every 20 seconds it will synchronize your logs to that central server which is super useful if, for example, you've got your um, robot or autonomous vehicle with a satellite or cellular connection um, on board, and um, while it's in flight, it can automatically synchronize its log files to a web-based server, so that even, even if you, there are issues with the aircraft, you still, um, you're still able to to um, keep the log files and have those. Um, then we have a VPN configuration. Um, there, you, this Arpanian server supports both zero tier and WireGuard through the GUI, um, where you can just add those zero tier or WireGuard networks quite easily. Um, that's useful if you're using a cellular or satellite connection where you want to run your 
streams over a secure your nav link and video streams over a secure VPN. Uh, we have the about section, which will just give you some details about the versions of the hardware and software you're running, as well as the ability to download the Arpanion server log file for debugging purposes. Finally, we have the user management section, uh, which is where you can manage your logins. Uh, you've got the default admin admin here. We add, you can add users if you want. Um, so we're just going to add a new user here. Um, all these names and passwords need to be between two and 20 characters to work. Um, there we go. And if, if we want, we can delete that user or change their password as well. Um, it should be noted that these are, this user management's just for access to the web-based GUI. Um, things like your Mavlink streams and your video streams are not password protected by this. Um, so you'll need to, if that is an issue, you'll probably need to look at running something like a VPN. For any sort of queries or user support issues, um, the Alpanium website has contact details for myself. Um, otherwise, you can raise issues on the GitHub here. Um, otherwise, through the RGPilot forum in the Companion Computers section, you can post any questions or issues there as well. Um, thank you for, for listening. I um, hope this has been useful in that showing an, quite an easy way to manage a companion computer on an autonomous vehicle um, that runs RGPilot or PX4 um, for routing your Mavlink streams, um, low latency video streaming, and um, a few other useful features as well. Uh, thank you.